I'm ready. Awesome. So, uh, arkadaşlar merhaba Kripto Emre'ye hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Bugün sizler için acayip özel bir konuğum var. Uh, MIT'den kriptoloji profesörü, Turing ödüllü uh, Profesör Silvio Mikali ile beraberiz. Kendisi Boston'dan bizimle uh, bağlantıya geçti. Kanalımı takip edenler bilir daha önce uh, hangi soruları sormamı istiyorsunuz diye sormuştum size. Şimdi sizden gelen en popüler soruları kendisine yönelteceğim. Uh, Silvio, Mr. Mikali, thanks for joining me today. It's uh, such a pleasure and a great honor to meet you. Thank you very much, Amre. It's a pleasure uh, also for me to meet you and your audience. So thanks. Uh, I mean, uh, I I want really wanted to do this interview because Algorand is a very exciting technology. Uh, I mean, I remember my first uh, Algorand transaction. You know, in Bitcoin, it usually takes around an hour to you know validate a transaction, and in Algorand, it was just immediate. So uh, that was super fascinating to me. Uh, so that's why, I mean, uh, I was super interested about the tech and a lot of people are actually also interested in Algorand in Turkey. So I really wanted to, you know, talk uh, with the big guy about what you guys are doing and what's your, your future plans and what are you going to be building in the future. So before we begin, could you please tell us a bit about yourself? I mean, uh, how did your cryptocurrency journey start? <laughs> so, well, uh, I've been... Uh... And I'm working on cryptography for decades, but has been uh, I'm a cryptographer, and uh, um, and uh, also recently I was start looking at uh, um, economic mechanisms that uh, somehow so incentives uh, mechanisms, and um, as well also I've been interested in distributed computation. My first uh, PhD I granted in uh, I'm afraid in 1985 it was on the subject of Byzantine agreement. And so turns out that uh, cryptocurrency are in the intersection of uh, cryptography, distributed computation, and uh, and essentially mechanism designs, economic mechanisms. So it was a, a bit of a perfect storm <laughs> for me. So so and so everything that I worked on finally came to play, and I was exposed to the beautiful uh, idea, right? Of Bitcoin it was uh, a beautiful, uh, but uh, with a uh, less elegant solution to say the least and so i was fascinating and uh, because you know criticizing is always easier than doing anything so i decided well if i i were to do it from scratch what i would do and so i locked myself uh, for uh, six months uh, and then i come up with uh, a complete alternative design which is now is the backbone of a algorand blockchain and uh, and a cryptocurrency Awesome. That's that's pretty exciting. And uh, the, another question from the audience was, uh, how did you come up with the name? Where does Algorand name derive from? <laughs> so, you are talking to a cryptographer. Reveal uh, anything but the source of inspiration. The source of inspiration is always the most personal to all of us. And uh, but uh, it's enough to say that the Algorand I wanted to uh, evoke in a Tolkien fashion a, a kind of uh, magic realm in which you know everything is possible thanks to the power magical power of mathematics how about that that is uh, <laughs> that is uh, which is actually very close to uh, to the truth but yeah awesome <laughs> so yeah i mean uh, you you looked at the bitcoin white paper you saw that in action and then you decided to build something better and I mean, to be honest, a lot of people thought about the same idea. So today there's actually lots of uh, decentralized blockchain platforms which are actually going after the same market. So uh, what makes Algorand unique among these decentralized platforms today? Well, fortunately, we, uh, the co-founder of Ethereum, right, um, Buterin, and uh, went on publicly stating that it was impossible for a cryptocurrency to be simultaneously decentralized, scalable, and secure. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I need to argue. <laughs> so take it from him, don't take it from me. So somehow to achieve all these things uh, simultaneously was really the hallmark of, uh, of uh, Algorand. Algorand is uh, really decentralized. You know, it could be billions of people participating to the consensus protocol. And yet is scalable, as you mentioned, uh, within seconds, or we, 
we produce a block. And by the way, our block is final. So you don't need to have a farther uh, waiting uh, that you know, somehow new block, a, a certain number of blocks are added to the chain. As soon as a block arrives on the algorithm blockchain, it's going to stay there forever. And, uh, and so it is very scalable, very secure, and, uh, and actually truly decentralized. Everybody who has an algorithm token is eligible to participate to our consensus protocol. And the consensus protocol is so, uh, so fast and so inexpensive that really we lower the barrier of entry. Anybody can participate to it. Uh, I understand. So uh, you say your uh, algorithm makes it. So I, I think you guys are calling it pure proof of stake. So if you yes. can also tell us about how does it work and how is it different than traditional proof of stake. Oh, yes. Proof of stake is a generic term and, uh, and, uh, and governs a portfolio of approaches, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> let me describe it somehow uh, a delegated proof of stake. That is a very simple idea and is the most uh, popular among cryptocurrencies today. Essentially, the idea is simple. In, in delegated proof of stake, you say essentially, you see those, uh, I don't know, 11 people out there, don't they look honest? Yes, they do look honest. And let me bet they will continue to be honest in the foreseeable future. So why don't we give them the power to generate the next block in the chain on behalf of all of us? The end. Is simple? Yes. Is this decentralized? No. This is very centralized. Whether it is 11 or 21 or even 100, like, you know, Libra wanted to do, right? I mean, okay, so let me start from there. So bonded proof of stake is another simple idea. We are not having, you know, 20 people or 200, it can be any number, who is willing to put some money in the middle of the table where uh, it's far away from you, you cannot touch your money anymore. And uh, the people who put uh, money in the middle of the table are the ones who can generate the next block on behalf of all of us. And um, their influence in generating the next block is proportional to the amount of money they put in the middle of the table. And if they misbehave, then this money can actually be confiscated. You go, wow, that is really, that nails it. That solves the problem. But not really, because let me ask a very simple question. How much money can you put in the middle of the table Hostage, not invested in anything, just hostage. And um, for most of us, it's going to be a very tiny amount. So in a very, in a system like this, the danger is that we actually make it very simple for big thieves with deep pocket to put a disproportionate amount of money in the middle of the table for the sole purpose of the controlling the blockchain. So all these uh, proof of stake, they mean very well, they have a very simple idea, but at the end, they don't deliver on the on decentralization and uh, security and scalability. And mm -hmm. so that is uh, what uh, uh, Algorand uh, is, uh, wants to do very different. So let me, rather than continuing to enumerate the proof of stake number three, four, and five, they all have a common theme. And the common theme is the whole economy is secure if and only if the participant in a small piece of the economy are honest. And you say, what? Is this security? Of course not. Because if you have the whole economy at the mercy of a very small piece, good luck. That is a recipe for disaster. Who are these small piece? In proof of work are the miners. Now, you tell me in the global GDP, what do the miners represent? Global GDP, I cannot even see them, not, not only with glasses, I need you know, uh, uh, microscopes yeah. to find them. So in, the, in the delegated proof of stake are the 11 delegates, right? And so on and so forth. So Algorand essentially means that you know, if the majority of the money is in honest hands, the economy keeps on working. And that's way different. And, uh, and because all of a sudden you require a very big conspiracy of a major chunk of the economy in order to sink the very economy of which you have such a big piece of. 
and that is a totally different story. That is the algorithm story. Now, technically, the way we do it is that uh, we somehow elect at random a committee, uh, which is as follows. We select at random a bunch of tokens, say a thousand tokens, wherever they are in the world, invested in, in, uh, in some of the opportunities that blockchain or algorithm blockchain gives you in your wallet, wherever they want to be. The money is wherever they want to be. You select 11, 11 tokens at random. The owners of these tokens are form a committee who somehow agrees on the block, up or down again. Right? That, is, uh, that is the idea. Of course, if you see it this way, you say, well, can I ask who selects at random the tokens? Because if it is going to be me, I'm going to select myself, my friends, my family, right? Not very good. So the idea here in algorithm is that you actually run a cryptographically fair lottery yourself. So in the privacy of your computer, you run a cryptographic lottery, means, meaning that you cannot improve the odds of being selected, your tokens to be selected at all. Even if you are a nation state with huge resources, you cannot make it more probable that your tokens is selected. Mm -hmm. That is point one. And if you is, think of it like you pull the lever of a cryptographic uh, slot machine, you can pull the lever only once for each token you have. And case one, you don't win. If you don't win, you don't participate to, uh, to the agreement on the block. If you do win, you have actually a proof of victory. So you have a winning ticket, which is a mathematical proof proving, oh, I'm part of this committee. So here is my proof that I'm part of this committee, and here is my vote on the block, up or down. Okay? Mm -hmm. I send them together. Okay, so now why is this you know, scalable? Because of this uh, self selection, random self selection, this random lottery, it takes me or anybody else a microsecond. That is very scalable. And if I'm selected, I have to put a, sh a short message, a proof of victory, and my opinion about the block. That is, that is fast. And now, why is this distributed? Because anybody who has a, a token can actually <laughs> participate in this fashion. So that is as distributed as it can be. We have 10 billion tokens and all, um, a, a, a projector, half of which are, are now are in, right now in circulation. All of them can participate. So even if you have one token, you, you, uh, you have a chance to participate. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this secure? Because imagine even that we now think about a very powerful adversary. I'm a very big and scary guy, and I'm so powerful that I can, at the flick of my finger, corrupt any 1,000 users I want in the world. Okay, so whom do I want to corrupt? The members of the committee. But I have a problem. I don't know whom I should corrupt. I should corrupt you right now in Ankara, or I should corrupt this lady in Shanghai or this um, 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 uh, man in Paris. I don't know because I don't know who is going to win the lottery for the current block. Okay, so initially I cannot do it. But after the winners come up with their proof of victory and their opinion about the block, now I know who they are. And now I can corrupt them with my incredible powers. But guess what? At this point, it's too late to corrupt them. Why? Because their message about the block and their proof, the winning ticket, are virally propagating over the internet. And I don't have the power, no more than any government has the power, to put back in the bottle a message virally propagated by Wikileaks. So the mm -hmm. algorithm system is secure because beforehand, you don't know whom you should corrupt and exposed after the fact is too late to go up. So mm -hmm. that is essentially the basic of the architecture. And that's why it took a little bit of a while, perhaps, to it was not so obvious how to guarantee decentralization, scalability, and security at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, this is actually a really interesting concept because I mean, it's it's a totally new take on like what other guys are doing with proof of stake. So when you describe it this way, it makes a lot of sense. But as you know, the cryptocurrency ecosystem is also uh, it contains a lot of noise. So there's a lot of teams and projects claiming that 
their algorithm is faster yeah. or better or more secure. So, uh, like, is are there any other projects that you feel like it is like a tough competition for Algorand, uh, or is it just like uh, marketing jabber? Like, what do you think about the ecosystem? Do you see anybody so I think else? The ecosystem is a very healthy ecosystem. So the fact that there are um, thousands of cryptocurrency. I think I welcome uh, this, uh, this fact and uh, shows uh, the ability of innovation uh, and, and things. Uh, if you ask me the one uh, cryptocurrency that I respect the most, it may, it may appear uh, bizarre to you, but it's actually Bitcoin <laughs> because uh, it somehow arrived the first and had a very good idea, right? Because what is the problem? It says uh, um, uh, that through this proof of work, you don't give the power to me or to you or to, or to somebody else. But you say everybody is welcome to participate to this computational game. Of course, it was a good idea and it was the first idea and, uh, and problems, and but that happens uh, all over in, in life. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, they are not the initial solutions which are the best, but are the ones that come uh, later. So, when I think of it, you know, we are going to, I, I'm going to see that the Bitcoin, in my opinion, will uh, uh, continue to exist, maybe not as a mean of exchange but as a way of investment somehow. And I think, and by the way, you guys in, in Turkey have invented money, right? The Lydians were in the center of Anatolia and they invented this notion, abstract notion of money. And, uh, and, uh, and ever since they did, every form of money continues to exist with us. Cash continues to exist with us. Uh, checks continue to exist with us. And uh, wire transfer, I guess, is going to be even more expensive <laughs> and slow. It's going to continue. And but even by the way, even barter continues, right? I don't know of any form of money. You know, maybe we don't call him barter anymore, right? But uh, whenever my neighbor is a doctor, right, and he wants to know something about, you know, <laughs> mathematical, he asks me. And when I want to have something about America, I ask him, you know, I am, we are trading favors, professional courtesy. But that is actually better, pure and simple in, in, some, in some sense. So I feel that uh, for these reasons, no new in, uh, form of money will ever be, uh, will disappear. And I think that uh, cryptocurrency, however, they are going to have a very um, beautiful and strong presence and uh, is good in, in order to democratize access to finance and uh, and, uh, and uh, lower all the transaction costs. And even more, in my opinion, is uh, that they allow us to leverage the trust that there is uh, across you know, the network. Is very, if you ask me, Silvio, do you believe that most of the people are um, honest enough? <laughs> I'll say absolutely. But uh, if I am transacting now with a particular person, then I'm very worried about whether this particular person is, uh, is honest or not. So in my opinion, a distributed blockchain, truly distributed, the real advantage is that you can leverage this trust that we all know exists you know, and, uh, and uh, most everywhere and concentrated on a single person. So it doesn't matter to me anymore whether this person is honest or not, because I know that the network is, is is honest and that is uh, is is enough to transact with security and that is a very fundamental shift i believe that we are very social animals but somehow we have not been able to uh, harvest this uh, uh, spread the trust that everybody on uh, on uh, of, of honesty that is a little bit everywhere but you don't know exactly where and uh, uh, that is a beautiful idea of right? the distributed blockchain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I was actually going to ask about this as a follow-up question uh, by the end of the interview, but like you, since you already mentioned, uh, so you believe Bitcoin is going to stay uh, for forever as a novelty, even though there are going to be like better blockchains, like more efficient, or faster, like more, uh, you know, energy. Uh, uh, friendly and everything, but uh, do you think Bitcoin will ever, uh, you know, cease to exist, or uh, do you do you think Bitcoin is also going to evolve into something that's much more capable than what it is today? Well, so let's put it this way: I'm, uh, I am, uh, 
I believe it will continue to exist, but maybe as a form of a store of value, that will be my bet right now. Um, the ability to evolve, uh, unfortunately, was not part of the design. Some part of uh, um, so I really believe that that was uh, perhaps one of the main faults in, in addition to the energy and the consumption of energy, uh, useless waste of energy. I think that you know, the inability to evolve is a serious drawback because I believe that uh, life is about intelligence, intelligent adaptation. And the moment in which we say, well, I'm too tired to continue to evolve, <laughs> we should make a room to another species who has not, uh, who has still lack the energy to evolve. So I really believe that you know, we, we uh, very much in Algorand, we really made sure from the very beginning, we knew that the protocol wanted to go to evolve and evolve in a consensual manner. manner. So the same way that you know, somehow you agree on the block, which is you know, a bunch of transaction, using the same random self-selection mechanism, we can agree on uh, our, our committee who somehow approves somehow a new monetary policy, say, or, uh, or uh, on a new size of the block or whatever the, the community needs. So you need to have somehow distributed governance if you want to have a live and therefore adaptable blockchain capable of serving not only our immediate needs of today, but also the needs of our community in the future. Mm. I see, I see. Uh, so uh, that's great. Uh, so let, let me get back to the questions that I have from the audience then. Uh, a lot of folks ask if you are familiar with uh, Charles Hoskinson's algorithm, the Cardano. Oh, not only I'm familiar, I consider Charles a friend. And by oh, really? Way, I think, yes. So first of all, um, in some sense, there are, uh, he, he comes from mathematics. And uh, you know, so mathematicians can actually be practical people, despite yeah. the, <laughs> despite the, And he's a friend. And actually, the, the Cardano um, uh, is, uh, um, is very rigorous, right? So very often, you find it you all. Know, unsubstantiated claims about uh, this and the other cryptocurrency, but, uh, uh, but Cardano, I have uh, uh, respect for Cardano because uh, whatever they say that as a proof, as a proof, and it usually is a, a paper, a theorem, and, and a proof of the checks. So I have really a lot of respect. At the same time, I'm, I want to be on the record very clear, but I consider Algorand, I really love Algorand and the way we orchestrated our own proof of security an approach, uh, but certainly uh, Cardano and uh, and uh, and, uh, and Charles are. Uh, I think we share a view of, 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 of the world where somehow things have to be first of all most rigorous before we can ask people to believe in what we are doing. We need to have somehow some kind of mathematical proof and not just you know hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually great here. So, uh, I mean, uh, friendly competition always yields like better results for the community. So Absolutely. I'm glad that you're feeling that way. So, uh, I mean, as, as you mentioned, uh, I mean, my uh, old mentor, uh, which was my marketing teacher, had a great saying. I mean, Marco, he once said that even if you have the best product in the world, it doesn't make any sense if you don't know how to market it. So, I mean, that's also an important aspect of a blockchain, like a decentralized blockchain, because even if you come up with like a great algorithm or like a great product, if you can't find good use cases for it, then it doesn't you know, bring any uh, value to anybody's life. Uh, which brings me to Algorand's you know, initiatives. Uh, the, the, the news on the Marshall Islands you know, issuing their own uh, digital cryptocurrency over the Algorand blockchain actually made a lot of noise here in Turkey. So could you tell us a bit about uh, how did you, you know, convince like a legitimate government central bank to actually trust Algorand's blockchain with their own currency? <laughs> so, well, the Marshall Islands actually, well, the government of the Marshall Islands uh, um, uh, contracted um, uh, FSB technology. And, uh, and, uh, and the FCB technology, after a, a long search of a virus blockchain, uh, uh, closed on, on an algorithm. I met them uh, 
at the annual uh, crypto conference in Santa Barbara. It's an annual event, happens every, every time. I was, uh, uh, I was uh, there uh, as a keynote speaker, speak, speaker, and I was approached by FSB technology, and we start talking, and then we wanted to know more, and then uh, they realized the value of algorithm for, uh, for uh, this uh, uh, digital currency, national digital uh, currency opportunity, and then uh, uh, somehow we finally, uh, they chose us, and they, the government uh, um, of the Marshall Islands chose us. I, we are very honored of this choice. I think it is, uh, um, um, it shows of a great power of uh, uh, what you know, a national uh, cryptocurrency can do, and it's going to be the first example, and I hope they will go to the others. Because uh, I find that it, you know, it makes a lot of sense, you know, uh, a, a national cryptocurrency. You know, first of all, you have uh, very, in the case of Algorand, uh, the immediate finality of payments, right? So you reduce the number of errors. Um, the, the government maintains a monetary policy. But actually, you actually have even more instruments to execute your own monetary policy. So for instance, the traditional way in which in a moment of crisis, a government wants to put hand money, extra money, currency in the, hand, in the hands of the citizens, traditionally you also go to the banks, and then after a few months, uh, <laughs> when people can get it from the banks here, you can actually deliver immediately subsidies in a moment of crisis directly to the wallets of the citizens and only the ones who need it and not the others but in a way directly without having a, a trusted intermediary which are just a leakage of uh, of uh, subsidy and things so it's uh it's amazing what you can do mm -hmm. and in, also in terms of uh, uh clarity transparency anti-money laundering i mean uh, once we have something on a blockchain, it's kind of a very hard <laughs> to pretend with this, what happened to this money, right? And so, and if you want to do it you know, in a national way, you can actually make sure that uh, there is a know your customer procedure to allow a um, uh, public key in the system. So Algorand has a permissionless setting, does not have this, uh, this ability, but you know, a government can actually have, I want to certify the keys and use all the algorithm. Why do we want to use algorithm? Again, because even for a government, it's very important that uh, you don't have a single or two or 11 points of attack, but you have hundreds of servers. It's going to be very hard for anybody to mess around with your currency. Then you actually have uh, uh, the finality of payments and this transparency of way less errors. You bring down the cost of operation because also cash, distributing cash uh, and moving around by armored vehicles, that actually is a very costly business. And, um, and uh, in my opinion, in addition, Algorand does this other uh, great other uh, tools that are all these uh, the layer one contracts that is really a hallmark of Algorand that nobody else has. As you know, people use a smart contracts to do fancy schemes like you have an asset that i want and i have an asset that you want in the algorithm blockchain i can push a button and give you your asset my asset to you in seconds but then i have to say henry hello this is silvio remember i gave you this asset because i'm still waiting from yours and if you are honest you give it to me and if you're honest i'm out of luck so speed is not enough you must make sure that there is if and only if I do, if and only you do. And how do we solve these problems? Well, uh, for thousands and thousands of years, we've asked trusted intermediaries to say, I transfer the asset to the intermediary, so do you. If the intermediary is dishonest, he runs away with the asset. If it is honest, then he switches and gives me what I want and you what you want. But guess what? He, he wants to be paid for these services, right? And you know, six percent of the economy, it goes into financial friction. Now, which government wants to have financial friction among his own citizens? Nobody, mm. right? So, and of course, sometimes some trusted intermediary can add some value, but you don't need to have them in the algorithm blockchain just to make sure that you are not cheated, because from this part. You and I can transfer an asset in five seconds so that I know that I get my asset if and only if you get yours. 
and I don't mind going first because you know things that we are going to happen simultaneously. That's a mm -hmm. big advantage. And you know, in uh, so I think that Algon will be great for a, a developing country because uh, it makes access to to sophisticated financial transactions or even this atomic in, uh, swaps, atomic in the sense of the indivisible. No, this doesn't happen without this happens simultaneously at a very low cost. But also in a developed uh, country, you know, six percent of the GDP. <laughs> It's a lot of money. You don't have a developed country. You don't have too many opportunities to such have such a GDP growth. And if you have a, a system based on uh, with this uh, layer one um, ability to execute uh, uh, immediately such a sophisticated transaction, you're going to see your GDP economic activity level really soar. Mm -hmm. By the way, when they want to say that Algorand does this a uh, layer one. What does that mean? Other people do it maybe with smart contracts, which are slow, expensive, and very prone to, to error, very delicate. We do it essentially at the same consensus layer. So in other words, we handle sophisticated transactions like this with the same security and the same speed as an ordinary pay payment. And I think that's a very big advantage and uh, that is our layer one uh, strategy that uh, we want to uh, have uh, all kind of suite of very sophisticated transaction to occur as simple as transferring you know two algos from one wallet to another enable two algo holder to, very, to do sophisticated transactions uh, for free and uh, and we are actually uh, launched this new capability on our chain uh, and uh, last November, and now we are about to launch, you know, um, at the next wave of a layer one contract, and uh, this is July. Mm, I see. Uh, I mean, you made some really good points, uh, and the, you, you know, doing these kinds of uh, swaps in the you know base layer it means less moving parts, so it's more secure, more reliable. I totally agree with you on that. And the six percent, you know, friction is actually a lot of money, as you said. I mean, like. Imagine if we were able to, you know, utilize that uh, friction into our economy. I mean, that would save a lot, of, you know, save money money for a developing country like Turkey. But uh, I mean, I kind of feel like uh, there there's like a contradiction between uh, central banks, uh, the current monetary system, and and the decentralized economies such, such as Algorand, because. I believe it was Hamilton, right? Alexander Hamilton, who came up with the central bank idea in the States. I mean, the po total point of was it to, you know, collect all the debts of the states in one place so it can be managed easier. So we have a central authority at one end and you're trying to convince them to go decentralized. So I feel like there's a contradictory, you know, conflict of interest there. So here's my follow up question. Uh, why don't, doesn't central banks just utilize uh, fintech instead of a decentralized blockchain to re reduce friction in the pay, you know uh, financial ecosystem? Well, first of all, um, uh, my understanding right now is that 80% of the uh, central banks are considering some form of a, a national cryptocurrency. And, and so remember that the decentralization means trust. Wow. And, um, and what you want to do is once a, governments understand that decentralization means in their own citizens and they remain in power of monetary policy, that is usually the, the number one reasons in which they don't want to get uh, to join a decentralized, a permissionless you know, cryptocurrency. But uh, if you issue the money, you are the only one who can issue. If you can uh, figure, uh, uh, nominate and having control of as many validators to approve blocks you want, and with different weights, you are much better served if you have uh, 1,000 validators that say this one has 10% uh, of the power because, uh, and so on and so forth. But because if you make essentially impregnable to attack. So right now, you know, cyber attacks are going to be more uh, deadly than uh, 
conventional attacks. And the, the easiest way is to attack a source of money. So to have a essentially decentralized mm -hmm. by design by your own uh, country and having it so that you, know, you remain the only one who can issue the money is a great difference. Also because not only you enable immediate set settlement, low cost of transaction, and you don't have the, the cost of uh, uh, handling cash, but also you enable private citizen within your own citizen to transact with each other with, you know, without an unnecessary intermediary. If an intermediary wants to add value, welcome. But if intermediary, it only enables us, I don't cheat you, you don't cheat me, and we can do it you know, at a no cost, we should do it at no cost and put uh, the money we generate, the economy generates, invested in uh, education, prosperity, and uh, all kinds of other things. By the way, what I also want to say that you know, what we at Algorand have done is that we have developed this architecture, we call it co-chain. You know, so we are, Algorand is uh, decentralized, secure, and scalable, permissionless chain. And the world needs this. But also governments and, and or private enterprises like large banks may want to have the transparency, the finality, the uh, the trust of a, of a blockchain and the low cost of a blockchain for internal operation. And so, and but rather than having a you know, side chain or a, or a sub chain, a co chain means is a, you are a, uh, you are a bunch of equals. A co chain is in charge of generating its own block and. Uh, and using Algorand for doing having only their own consensus. They are in charge of, of uh, running their own consensus. But, but by doing so, they are also able to interact with other co-chain with with, with, uh, without any, um, um, any fear to be cheated, without any fear that they transaction gets hanged without any fear that who should go first, right? And, uh, and so that, uh, we facilitate this, you know, uh, the ability to co-chain, which are all ground based, they can actually transact with each other with the consensus, by the way, of the stakeholder, of the government to transact, they must approve what is, uh, what is the transaction you can do. The, the co-chain is uh, shielded from all outsiders, only, People inside the chain uh, can uh, can monitor the block. Uh, you and I can uh, cannot even have a visibility into this, and yet you have all the transparency you need and trust inside, but you still preserve the ability to transact across the chain because mm. people are very eager to uh, uh, make a uh, imprison <laughs> themselves uh, without realizing so into their own castle in which you are all very secure, but at the moment when we, uh, you build all these walls, uh, you are inside and it becomes very grudgy to somehow collaborate and to trade with the outside world. And uh, even though most of our, our transaction in a large country happens inside, I mean, foreign exchange, foreign trade is really, is really the, the world there is, is larger outside than is inside by definition. And you want to need the preserve of the ability to interact in a low cost, convenient, and very secure way with the outside world as well. That's 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 really exciting. I mean, like you, you just described best of both worlds. So like central banks or authorities can actually have their co-chain with the more control over that uh, you know chain, and then also utilize Algorand's, you know. Uh, decentralized secure secure platform that's that's actually really exciting so uh speaking about recent developments are there any other cool new future you guys are working on lately oh yes so in, uh, in july we are going to have um, um, we are going to add um, a, a state to our uh, layer one contract so that means that you can actually um, run a, a auction or even a Dutch auction or an entire um, um, ICO in a very, very simple, um, immediate way. And uh, we are going to, uh, 
we are going to uh, next we're going to do uh, our general um, um, smart contracts we are going to make you know our uh, blockchain resistant to quantum attacks because as you know uh, uh, quantum computers are uh, becoming uh, faster and faster and uh, and but unfortunately the traditional uh, uh, cryptographic algorithms are vulnerable to uh, to this quantum computers which so we are making sure that our chain will remain secure uh, even when quantum com computers become very cheap and very and ubiquitous and that is a, um, uh, that is another thing and uh, another thing that we are doing is uh, uh, is to uh, to be able to have access to the algorand chain um, uh, in a way that is uh, provably correct uh, and very fast because essentially not everybody uh, say in algorand everybody has, has the ability to participate to the consensus protocol but you say well you know Frankly, I, I would like to transact. Thank you for uh, participating, giving the opportunity to participate. Ah, I don't want to participate. Nobody's forced to participate or grab over here to participate. Right? So, is, and, uh, and then uh, when new users want to, to join the chain, right? So they need to now download the chain. Uh, okay, but you know, if you transact, uh, <laughs> A new block every few seconds. <laughs> the chain becomes very long. So, right, very becomes a very big chain. So, what you want to do is to have uh, some kind of uh, algorand information services that allow you to give you access to the chain. But rather than say, "Oh, trust my word," what block you want to see? Oh, this block here. Trust this is the block. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to give you the information you want together with a short easy to verify proof that the information you ask me about is actually correct mm -hmm. and so this way it doesn't matter whether you trust or don't trust the, the service provider information service providers you know that you are going to have a, a mathematical proof that shows that your information is correct and i think that is part so even though the chain is enormous somebody can run a paid service you want to ask me a question i'm going to access my database i'm going to extract the answer you want i'm going to give it to you and together with a short proof of the information is correct and i think you're happy because you don't uh, you cannot be cheated by anybody and uh, and that is also a way in which you know we want to be more transparent so we do have actually a very deep roadmap and by the way, we constructed our protocol so that it continued to evolve. And I believe that this uh, evolvability is the most precious resource that Algorand has. Mm. I see. Re really, really interesting stuff. Uh, so, I mean, that, that actually concludes all the questions that I have from the Turkish community about Algorand. But uh, I would also like to have your take on like what's happening lately with the economy. I mean, uh, we, sh we should also discuss like uh, what's happening with the world lately. I mean, this uh, COVID, uh, you know, uh, pandemic is turning into something really, really, uh, you know, interesting and scary at the same time. And how governments are trying to fight uh, with it is also really concerning because I mean, the Fed announced like $2 trillion worth of, you know, financial easing. And on top of that, they just, you know, lowered the interest rates into zero. So in, they're trying to save today, but they're at the same time, they're actually implanting seeds for the next global crisis. So I'd really like to hear what you think about what's happening today. Uh, and like, if this is going to be, uh, you know, a uh, breaking point in terms of, uh, you know, Keynesian economics. Oh, no, thanks. Is that, um, that is a very big challenge for, for the world and uh, is a very sad uh, situation. And a uh, lot of people uh, have uh, reduced their uh, social interaction. We are, uh, by definition, very social uh, beings and uh, it's really a pity and uh, the deaths and, uh, and all the pain um, is unspeakable of yeah. yet that, that's for sure at the same time that in my opinion is going to make very clear the distinction between a 
social network in which you can easily spread information, true or not, it doesn't matter, but the information travels fast. But in a situation of crisis, you really want to have a source of truth. So something that is truly distributed, you know nobody can alter the data. You know that you have a source of truth where you can deposit data like um, um, uh, your own situation in a way that uh, nobody can accuse it to have fabricated the data. And so I think that you know, uh, this will, uh, uh, to have a, a joint source of truth rather than just a joint database, which is very different because, right, so you want to guarantee that, you know, um, the immutability of whatever is put there and the authenticity of whatever is put there. And uh, so I think this, uh, we are going to come up with a, a new awareness of what, up, what type of joint database we are going to have. And I think the uh, distributed blockchain will, uh, uh, will be one of the tools that uh, we'll use in the future to fight crisis. Crisis are going to be always with us. Some we can predict and some we cannot predict. But uh, to have you know, good tools, in particular, that generate trust in the international community and information that we have access to, and, uh, and uh, as a, um, uh, I believe that the distributed blockchain will uh, be a very uh, sophisticated and yet uh, available and low cost way to generate trust and information that we can be trusted. That, that's, that's an interesting take, but like, what do you also think about the economy today? Uh, do you think this uh, outbreak and the uh, actions that are being taken by these central banks to avoid a uh, financial breakdown is going to, you know, is it going to uh, speed up the adoption of cryptocurrencies? Uh, or is it, uh, do, do you think there's going to be yeah. any correlation between I those two? Uh, okay. I, I, I don't know. There are, uh, I don't know to interpret uh, the, the questions. I really believe that, you know, I, I do believe that uh, uh, cryptocurrency, particular uh, national or, uh, or, um, uh, or uh, distributed, like, you know, the algorithm, the main chain or uh, co-chains mm -hmm. are going to be providing a very superior service. And I hope they will be recognized by the public. I do not hope that the collapse of, the, of the trust in governments causes the increase of value in the blockchain. My hope is that the blockchain, distributed blockchain, and distributed cryptocurrency will have a role to play, will have an increase uh, uh, prosperity for everybody. And uh, I do hope, however, that our social institutions and the uh, national uh, uh, or international uh, will continue to be strong and uh, and that the blockchain are going to be an additional tool and uh, not just a uh, last resource because people lose faith uh, in everything else. I hope this is not the path uh, to success that I wish to uh, to Algorand or to any other cryptocurrency. Mm, I understand. I am, yeah. Uh, I mean, creative destruction is good, but we wouldn't want to destroy the entire human civilization and how we, you know, progressed up until now. Because yeah, government is actually like a uh, important foundation of like uh, of today's modern world. So, yeah. but, but, but very, but very open. So some, uh, most of governments, as you know, they are very responsible and they react uh, uh, cogently. Sometimes, you know. We are fortunate to be citizens in such a government. Not everybody has the same uh, the same uh, good fortune that we do have. And uh, uh, but the notion of uh, if you are not so fortunate, of course, the notion to have you know a, a cryptocurrency that actually is really scalable and is really a means of exchange, not just investment, as in Bitcoin, for which you can really buy daily stuff that you need for you and your family and in a even though the situation uh, in which you are living in is not um, uh, very good or is a brink of collapse, uh, that, is, uh, that, that is good to know. And uh, somehow the fact that it is uh, really distributed means that it is very hard to uh, hack. And the fact that it's very scalable, scalable means that uh, it can actually be used for uh, buying frequent things everybody buy frequent things that is also a good and uh, and the fact that you know is uh, somehow transparent uh, give us confidence 
to both of us who do, are not so fortunate to live uh, in uh, well-organized countries. Got it, got it. Cool. Well, Silvio, this was a, such a pleasure. I mean, it was a very enlightening call for me. So I'd like to thank you once more for having the time to chat with me today. And I'm really looking forward to your future updates on oh. Algor and, and yeah, seeing more updates from your team. So thank you. Thank you very much, Emre, and uh, see you in Turkey next time. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Like, hopefully we will do the second one in person after all this crisis ends. <laughs> looking awesome. forward, yes. Thanks yeah. a lot. Bye. Bye-bye.